You know how to turn on the mics? Okay. You can. You can wait probably till it's time. All right. We ready? Yep. Wrong one. You're in the wrong source. Okay. All right. But we need the announcements. There we go. Okay. All right. Well, welcome, everyone, to uh, tonight's photojournalism night. It's the third photojournalism night of the year. Um, before we get started, I'm going to read some announcements here. Um, again, we've been saying this each week. Uh, the clubhouse will be open for all scheduled classes. They are live in-person events, uh, but they're also live streamed and uh, uh, recorded so that students can watch them 24-7, any, anyone that's registered for the class. Um, the clubhouse is open for all scheduled competitions. Uh, again, these are live in-person events. And um, is that? Oh, it's coming through. It's it's coming through the speaker. We got to turn off the. Okay, all right. I'm sorry about that. We're having some technical difficulties tonight, so it's been a little uh, frustrating. Um, again, the comp the clubhouse is going to be open for all competitions. They are live and in person, and they'll be also live streamed, recorded, and available on YouTube. Uh, unless otherwise noted, though, we will not be opening the clubhouse for any Zoom presentations that are scheduled probably through the end of March. Um, with the CDC changing its guidelines, we may be changing a little bit too. But for now, uh, any Zoom sessions will be held from homes and not in the clubhouse. It's not going to be open. We will send you the links to the Zoom presentation, uh, usually the Wednesday before the presentation. Um, as of now, these are all member-only presentations. Uh, they will be recorded for future viewing by club members, but are not going to be available on YouTube. So I want to make sure that's clear to everyone. Um, other things for COVID considerations. Uh, all persons attending Friday night meetings, uh, we are requiring you to uh, wear masks uh, no matter what your vaccination status is. Again, this was going to be through the end of February. We're going to extend it at least for now until the end of March. Um, we may change that. So I just want you to be aware of that. And uh, we will announce uh, when those requirements are going to be lifted. Uh, we also are requiring students and helpers who attend live classes to wear masks uh, when they're in the building. We do strongly encourage all non-vaccinated members and students to attend meetings and classes virtually, at least for the time being. All right, some upcoming competitions. Um, next uh, Friday, we have a creative competition, so March 4th. The deadline for that was actually last Wednesday, uh, February 23rd. So if you haven't gotten something in, we invite you just to come to the competition, listen to the judges' comments, and uh, enjoy the nice pictures. Um, March 11th, we'll have another B competition. I do want to point out that up until now, the B competitions have been print competitions, but this one will be a digital um, competition, projection competition. And the deadline for entry to that into Shutter Score is March 2nd. And then, again, B competitions are for beginning uh, photographers, student photographers, and so on. Uh, and then our final, I won't call it a competition because photojournalism isn't exactly competitions. Our final photojournalism night uh, is March 25th, and the deadline for that is March 23rd. Um, that will end the competitions for this club year. Our club year runs from June 1st through May 31st. So those will that will be the end of the competitions for this year. We do have an end of year competition. We'll be sending out more information about that uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, upcoming speakers. Okay. Um, we've got a members only Zoom presentation. Peter Baumgarten uh, will be talking about Shoot for the Stars. Uh, 
it's kind of uh, an uh, astronomy, um, astro, what's astrophotography is the word I'm looking for. Uh, the clubhouse is not going to be open that night. Um, again, that might change, but as of right now, it will not be open. Uh, I also don't have this on the slide, but on April 8th, we have a members only Zoom presentation. Lisa, <clears throat> Lisa Kuchara will be talking about light painting. Um, Clubhouse is not going to be open that night, um, again, unless we change our mind. But at the request of our speaker, this presentation will also not be recorded. She asked that we not record that. So if you're interested in that, you're going to have to make sure you attend that Zoom meeting that night. Okay. I um, also want to point out that registration for spring classes is open. In the spring, we're offering three different classes, Fundamentals of Photography from Saturday, April 9th through May 14th. Um, that's two classes each Saturday for six weeks. Uh, Photoshop editing will be Wednesday nights from April 6th through June 8th. And then Lightroom will be on Mondays starting March 21st and running through April 25th. So if you're interested in any of these classes, we'd ask you to you know, get your registration in as soon as possible uh, so that um, you know, we can get uh, the materials out to you and we have a good idea of how many people we're going to have. All right, so we invite you to watch this and many of our Friday evening meetings uh, at your convenience on the CPS YouTube channel. There is a link on the CPS website homepage. If you look along the left-hand side toward the bottom, you'll see the little YouTube button. Click on that, and you'll be taken to our YouTube site. Or you can go to YouTube and search for Cleave Photographic. Um, you can also subscribe to our channel, and you'll be notified whenever a new video is posted. All right, so again, as I said, this is our third photojournalism night for the 2021-2022 year. Tonight, we only have 29 images, so this should be a fairly short meeting. Um, photojournalism is a little bit different than other kinds of photography. It has a special, some special rules, and its photographs are designed to tell a story. Uh, tonight, I'm going to, and also let me point out, there will be no judges this evening. When you submit your entry for photojournalism, we've asked you to put your comments on that image. If you're here in the clubhouse, you could read those comments or you know, ad lib those comments. But um, if you're not here, then we will have people uh, reading those comments for you. Before we get into that, I'm going to ask Mariah Kaiser, who is uh, the person responsible for photojournalism, to uh, say a few words about photojournalism. Make sure that uh, people know. Let me get you turned on here. Yeah, just hold it until it's green. There you go. You may have to pull that down a little bit closer to your, there you go. All right. Okay, thank you, Mike. Um, I'm gonna start out just by reading again what's on our website uh, when you look to see what you need to submit when you're submitting to photojournalism. We don't have points uh, at each uh, evening of this because I think sometimes it discourages people from getting creative. Uh, and so the points really come at the very end. Anything you have uh, entered during the four photojournalism evenings uh, are eligible for a year end when there is an award. So just to clarify that, I know people like to get awards the same night, but we're looking for something different here. So what I'm going to do is read what's on our website first, and then I've looked a couple of other things up that I thought might be of interest to the club members. Photojournalism is the process of storytelling, as Mike said, using the medium of photography as your main storytelling device. While a journalist will use their pen and paper to tell stories, a photojournalist will use their camera, and now their phone, to capture the visual re uh, representation of a story. When submitting images for photojournalism nights, members are asked to give a brief description of their unique and powerful form of visual storytelling. Uh, and lots of times what people say is your picture should really 
be depicting the story without the words, but we added that just as a point of interest. Um, so I'm going to read a couple things. I looked it up just for the good of the order and on Wikipedia, and so I'm going to read that to you since we have a few minutes here tonight. It is journalism that uses images to tell a news story. It usually only refers to still images, but can also refer to video used in broadcast journalism. Photojournalism is distinguished from other close branches of photography, such as documentary photography, social uh, documentary photography, street photography, that we saw the other night when John Theobald gave that wonderful presentation and celebrity photography by having a rigid ethical framework which demands an honest but impartial approach that tells a story in strictly journalistic terms. Photojournalists contribute to the news media and help communities connect with one another. They must be well informed and knowledgeable and are able to deliver news in a creative manner that is both informative and entertaining. Like a writer, a photojournalist is a reporter, but they must often make decisions instantly and carry photographic equipment, often while exposed to significant obstacles, among them immediate physical danger, bad weather, large crowds, and limited physical access to their subjects. That in Wikipedia, and then um, I looked up the code of ethics. I think lots of times uh, photojournalists are presented with some difficult decision making, not only in the pictures they take, but in the ones they submit. Um, so I'll read the code of ethics also, just as a point of interest. This is from the National Press Photographers Association it's an American professional society, <clears throat> excuse me, that emphasizes photojournalism. The practice of photojournalism, both as a science and art, is worthy of the very best thought and effort of those who enter into it as a profession. Photojournalism affords an opportunity to serve the public that is equaled by few other vocations, and all members of the profession should strive by example and influence to maintain high standards of ethical conduct, free of mercenary considerations of any kind. There's a trick. It is the individual responsibility of every photojournalist at all times to strive for pictures that report truthfully, honestly, and objectively. Business promotion in its many forms is essential but untrue statements of any nature are not worthy of a professional photojournalist, and we severely condemn any such practice. It is our duty to encourage and assist all members in our profession, individually and collectively, so that the quality of photojournalism may consistently be raised to higher standards. It is the duty of every photojournalist to work to preserve all freedom of the press rights recognized by law and to work to protect and expand freedom of access to all sources of news and visual information. Our standards of business dealings, ambition and relations shall have them in a note of sympathy for our common humanity and shall always require us to take into consideration our highest duties as members of society. Um, no code of ethics can prejudge every situation. Thus, common sense and good judgment are required in applying ethical principles. Uh, there are pages and pages of information about photojournalism. You might want to look it up on Google. But uh, one of the judges a couple of years ago said a couple of things I remember. Um, and one of them was that uh, the story in the image takes precedence over the technique. So the story in the image is much more important than how perfect the picture is. And also, he, they said that one time, it's important to take a picture showing the context. Often you can do that by showing the foreground, 
the subject and the background. So those were tips from a couple of ju judges a couple of years ago. And I'll stop on that and hand it back to you, Mike. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mariah. Again, the photojournalism, you can see, has some special rules and things you're allowed to do to photos and not allowed to do. So um, we're going to jump ahead. I'm going to go ahead and get up to our um, images. Yeah, I'm okay. We're, that's too far. we got to back it up. Let me get back to the beginning image. Hang on. We're almost there. All right. So um, what we're going to do is when, when you submit images, uh, we're supposed to be getting comments on these images. So some of them are a little more extensive than others. Um, but, you know, if, if you do attend a meeting with the photojournalism night and you're here, we'd ask you to um, uh, go ahead and um, just so you know the the light went out on our projector, so you may want to turn to the side and see it over there. Um, so our first presenter tonight is uh, Angelie Persons, and she didn't submit too many comments, but basically these are all uh, the uh, Black Lives Matter protest and the police uh, activity there. So I'll just read the, uh, the titles. Uh, Black Lives Matter March is the first one. The second image, Black Lives Matter March number three. The next one is After the Protest number two. Um, police Stroll. And the final image is Damage After the Protest. So again, these all had to do with the Black Lives Matter protest and the policing uh, around that. Okay, um, reading comments will be myself and uh, John Theobald. So John is gonna take the next one. And these are images by Bonnie Luxo. Okay, the first one we see is working chalk artist. Chalk artists first draw their pictures on paper, then draw the outline on the sidewalk and lastly, they fill in the uh, fill it in with co their colors. The artists love to interact with people watching them and are happy when asked questions about how they begin chalk draw began chalk drawing, where they got their ideas, and how long it takes to create an, uh, to create on the sidewalk and many more. Along for the ride at the Tour de Donut bike event in Troy, Ohio. One rider wanted the company along the way. There are donuts at each of the four rest stops. For each donut, a don uh, for each donut a rider eats, five minutes are taken off your time. One rider ate so many donuts that his 35-mile ride only took one hour. I understand that he didn't feel very well after finishing. And then they are off. Before the Tour de Donut bike ride in Troy, Ohio begins, the kids are able to ride in the streets for several blocks and feel the excitement of riding in a group. Notice the little girl at the beginning who is pumped up and ready to win, while the bo little boy in the rear wearing gre a greenish shirt isn't sure what he wants, uh, isn't sure he wants to be here. We, excuse me, waiting patiently. This Belgium draft horse has had its mane decorated before being presented to the judges. He has had to show the judges that he was that he can follow his handler's commands quickly and in good form. The bottles and cans of products help to smooth his skin, clean and polish his hooves, and make his coat shiny. Helpful products. Horses need a great deal of grooming when being exhibited. The hair in the brushes add to some personality to the image, but where is the baby powder used? All right, our next uh, um, photographer is Fran Marino. And her first image is Hasetta Head Lighthouse 
Lane County, Oregon. Um, oops, bumped the wrong button. Uh, January 9th of 2022, I had the fortunate opportunity to be driving up the west coast of Oregon. I had no idea how gorgeous it was. We stopped off to see the Hesedic Head Lighthouse in Florence, Oregon in Lane County. Expecting very cold temperatures, I was surprised by the temperature of 59 degrees and sunny. The lighthouse has been in existence since the early 19th century. All right, Fran's next image is the grotto. The shrine and grotto in Portland, Oregon is an internationally renowned Catholic shrine and sanctuary. In the grotto, there is a re replica of Michelangelo's Pieta. The shrine was built in 1923 by Father Ambrose Mayer, who was thanking God for saving his mother's life during the childbirth of his sister. There are more than 60 acres of beautiful forest and botanical gardens surrounding the grotto. Masses are said daily in the Chapel of Mary. Next image is called Sea Lions Taking a Break. Along the Oregon West Coast, there was a spot where hundreds of sea lions uh, were basking in the sun. My group happened to stop to just take a few pictures and we looked down off the side of the road and saw hundreds of them. They call them dogs of the sea because they bark just as loud as a large dog. And when there are a lot of them barking, the sound travels very far and they are very loud. Brand's next image is called Cottage Grove in the early 1900s. Cottage Grove is a small city near Eugene, Oregon. Cottage Grove has that hometown atmosphere with many of the sides of the buildings painted with murals from the days gone by, such as the early 1900s. There are many other buildings with murals of movies, such as The Wizard of Oz, movies with Charlie Chaplin, and many more. And France's final image is Christie's Barbershop. Cottage Grove is a small city near Eugene, Oregon. Christie's Barbershop is one of the first female barbershop owners. Um, Christie takes care of men, women, and children. On Wednesdays, she has a special price for current and military veterans. She uses handmade imitation American flags as capes to cover her customers. It is a very happy and fun place to be that includes games, televisions, and toys for the kids. Okay, Marge Brady is the next uh, presenter of photos. Uh, first one, Cleveland Metro Parks ride the beach. For the past four years, the Cleveland Metro Parks mounted unit have held fundraisers, a, a fundraiser at the Cleveland Lakefront. For a fee, civilians can bring their horses and ride the beach with the rangers. The fundraising is not uh, for, is, the fundraising is for specialized equipment and training for the mounted unit. Ride the Beach, Cleveland. The rangers and riders start at Lower Edgewater and ride along the upper park, stopping at the Cleveland sign. Then they proceed down a back trail to the Lower Edgewater. Enjoying the water. For many of the horses, walking into a lake was a new experience. Some enjoyed the water, some refused to go in. A few unfortunate riders took an unplanned swim. <laughs> Splashing in the water. A few horses, while not willing to go in, out into the waves, enjoyed staying near the shore, splashing in the water. Horses are natural swimmers as long as they can keep their heads above water. Racing on the beach. One of the best parts of the ride was the opportunity to race on the sandy beach. An area of the beach was roped off for the horses and riders to enjoy. All right, our next presenter is Mariah Kaiser, and Mariah's here, so would you want to comment on him? Here's the, here's the comment you wrote, Mariah. <laughs> okay. That or you can comment, just ad-libbed. <laughs> Okay, I'm just like, the classic oh. song. What happened? Okay. 
You may want to look on the side because we're ha we're having some issues with our projector. Oh, here I I was at a fundraiser downtown and uh, watching as one of the people that was helping was making some ores. Uh, but we were inside, and he was doing this with a, a, a torch. So he'd assemble the whole thing and then torch it. And so that's a far cry from a, a, a campfire on the beach. And this little girl had tried it, and she wasn't quite sure <laughs> that it was to her liking. So I took the picture. This was at the same event, and um, it's always fun to see kids who are so invested in their artwork. And I just love the crayons and that patient father. Uh, I think it's the father uh, waiting while she completed her masterpiece <laughs> there. Cutie. Here's a selfie. Um, Remember, we used to look in the mirror whenever we got dressed to see how it was going, and now we take pictures of ourselves no matter what we're doing, and I caught this woman taking a picture of herself in her hat. That was, I'm sure, prayed the circle. Um, I added this because uh, both my son and my grandson wrestled, and it was the longest three minutes in my life each week. It was terrible. I just used to pray that, you know, my grandson or son would pin him within the first 30 seconds so I wouldn't have to go through the rest. Anyway, this is one of the pictures I took, and I just loved the ex the the attention that the, the ump was giving on the right-hand side and the and the boredom showed by the one of the one of the uh, audience. This again was parade the circle, and here was this woman. I think the the image itself, the that um, statue, that head is wonderful, but I loved it that it was getting fixed by somebody down here, um, fixing the neck. Okay, thank you, Mariah. Uh, our next uh, uh, photographer is Ronald Wilson. And his first image is called Amish Party, uh, an Amish family going home after attending a birthday party. They are walking because they live nearby. The photo is taken in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Uh, Ron's next image is called Rural Balloons. Hot air, uh, hot air balloon festival in rural county countryside of Lancaster County, PA. And Ron's last image is called Las Vegas 33. Uh, New Year's Eve in Las Vegas. The photo is taken from the top floor of a parking garage. Um, next uh, photo is by Tammy Jankovic. Uh, it's called Birthday Smash Cake. My grandson's first birthday party, his first real taste of a special treat, his very own homemade smash cake made by mommy. By the look on his face, I think he likes the cake. All right, and that uh, concludes our photos for tonight. Um, again, kind of a small uh, sample of, of images, uh, but we do encourage you, there is one more photojournalism night uh, in this club year. So if you were inspired by some of the things you saw, or you've got some ideas, um, you know, please get them submitted uh, and uh, we'll take a look at them toward the, I think at the end of March. So we wanna thank all those who did enter. And if you have any feedback uh, about, you know, this or anything that the club is doing, you can send your feedback to info at clevelandphoto.org. And uh, again, that concludes tonight's event. If you have or would like more information about either competing or to join the Cleveland Photographic Society, please visit our website at www.clevelandphoto.org. So good night, everyone. <laughs>